As I mentioned in the previous episode, Yuan Shikai's death in 1916 created a power vacuum in China, as his successors lacked the necessary charisma and popularity to unite the country. In 1917, the confrontation between the new president and the premier resulted in a standoff, which General Zhang Shen, commander of the Beiyang army, exploited and put Puyi back on the throne. The restoration of the monarchy lasted mere days, his actions fragmented the most powerful military unit and destroyed the balance of power between the rival factions. In the north, the Anhui clique and the Zhili clique emerged as the main contenders for power, while in the south, Sun Yat-sen was back and he would try again and again and again to unite the country under his banner. Following his quick victory over the monarchists, Premier Duan, leader of the Anhui clique, declared war on the central powers, took out large loans from Japan to modernize his own army, placed his supporters in high positions, then initiated new elections to consolidate his power. He wanted war with the South, while his main rival, President Feng, head of the Zhili clique, sought a peaceful solution. He agreed not to run for re-election, with the condition that Duan would also leave his position, but before that, Sun's constitutional protection movement had to be dealt with first to end the civil war. In Guangdong province, Sun Yat-sen gathered 100 members of the original parliament and created a new military government in Guangzhou, which elected him Generalissimo, supreme military leader. Sun could count on the support of the Yunnan clique, the old Guangxi clique, and Guangdong itself, although local military leaders immediately started undermining his position. Up north, pressured by Duan and others, President Feng ordered the military leader of his Zhili clique, Cao Kun, to make war on the south and end their movement. Hunan province was taken in early 1918, and by April, the Constitutional Protection Army was beaten. However, the attack was then halted, the southern provinces were not conquered. The 1918 elections were rigged by Premier Duan, the southern provinces boycotted it, so his Anhui clique took most of the seats. President Feng was replaced with the aging and neutral Xu Shichang, but while the vice presidency was promised to Cao Kun, Feng's protégé, it remained vacant, deepening the conflict between the two rival northern cliques. As promised, Duan also resigned, but he remained the most powerful man in China, controlling a large army and maintaining his influence over the government. The new president started negotiations with the South, where Sun's authority was eroding. Soon, he was sidelined by his former military supporters. The southern parliament was now under the control of the old Guangxi clique. Negotiations with the North continued throughout 1919, but they were sabotaged by Duan, while his northern parliament in Beijing drafted a new constitution. Duan also had influence over the Chinese delegation at the Paris Peace Conference. They accepted Japanese rule over the former German possessions in Shandong province, which angered the public and kickstarted the May 4th movement, weakening the Anhui clique's holding government. Duan's army then invaded Mongolia, but this threatened both the Zhili clique and Manchuria's Fengtian clique, so they declared war on Duan in July 1920, defeating his Anhui clique in a matter of days. Parliament was dissolved, Beijing was now under the control of the Zhili and Fengtian cliques. New elections were proposed, but only 11 provinces responded, so they did not take place. The two allies soon turned on each other, and in 1922, the Fengtian clique was pushed back to Manchuria. In the south, local warlords explored the idea of unification with the Zhili clique, which controlled much of the north. Sun, who had fled to Shanghai, recreated the Kuomintang, and denounced the secret negotiations, so in August 1920, the still-loyal military governor of Guangdong 
pushed Bangxi forces out of the province and allowed Sun to return. The Southern Parliament then reconvened in January 1921 and elected Sun president, so once again there were two presidents in the country. In 1922, he proposed to launch the Northern Expedition to unite the country, but his warlord supporters disagreed. They wanted to secure their own power, so in the summer, when the Zhili clique proposed the unification of the Northern and Southern governments through the restoration of Li Yuanhong as president, they cooperated and pushed Sun out of Guangdong. He once again fled to Shanghai. In June 1922, former President Li returned, the old parliament reconvened in Beijing, it seemed as if the country was united, returning to the 1917 status quo. However, Li was effectively powerless, the leader of the Zhili clique, Cao Kun, held real power. Cao orchestrated strikes and managed to get the president impeached, then bribed members of the parliament to elect him instead, which took place in October 1923. He neglected his presidential duties, but the next year, another conflict broke out with the Fengtian clique, which he almost won. However, one of his generals, Feng Yuxiang, betrayed him and formed another coalition, the Guomenjun, which took to Beijing and put him under house arrest. This allowed the Fengtian clique to gain victory. Cao was removed from power, his Zhili clique lost its northern provinces, and a new provisional government was formed. Puyi, the last emperor, was expelled from the Forbidden City, the rival factions cooperated to create a triumvirate, and they even invited Sun Yat-sen to the north to discuss national reunification. Sun had been very active in the south. He realized that he could not rely on warlords for military power, as they could turn against him once he was no longer useful. His party, the KMT, needed its own army, but since the Western powers were not interested, he turned to the Soviet Union for help. In 1923, he received money, weapons and military advisors like Mihai Borodin in return for forming an alliance with the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP, which had a few hundred members at the time, could thus expand. With their help, Sun retook the Guangzhou government, established the Wampua Military Academy with Chiang Kai-shek, one of his top lieutenants, and created a one-party state to defeat the warlords. When he was invited to Beijing the following year, he already had liver cancer and he died in March 1925, after which Chiang had to compete with Wang Jingwei for absolute leadership. In November of that year, the power-sharing agreement in Beijing fell apart. The Zhili and Fengtian cliques fought together against the Guomenjun, which was backed by the Soviets. At first, the Guomenjun performed better, but then the opposing forces pushed them back and captured Beijing, sacking the city. By April 1926, they were victorious, but they could not agree on who was to become the next president, so a series of weak interim governments followed. The war also weakened the Zhili clique, which was forced to move its armies to the north, leaving their southern flank open for the underestimated Kuomintang. This was a serious mistake, with even more serious consequences. In the south, the KMT now controlled Guangdong and Guangxi provinces, its military no longer depended on local warlords, and it was ready for action with newly trained officers and men. However, before the northern expedition could be launched, Chiang had to consolidate his position after a kidnapping attempt against him. In March 1926, while the northern warlords were busy with their latest war, he purged all Soviet advisors and imposed restrictions on communist members. The Soviets, nonetheless, instructed underground communist cells to support the expedition, which was finally launched in July, and this would eventually unite most of China, with a few exceptions. Sun Yat-sen, who had worked for decades and launched more than a dozen rebellions in order to achieve this goal, never got to see the end result. 
In the next episode, I will talk about the Northern Expedition and the subsequent period, all the way up to the Japanese invasion. Thank you for watching. See you next time.